Oh, oh, oh. It's not a three. It's a monster of a fish. Good fish right there. If you told me that I only get one lure to throw the rest of my life, uh, first I would argue with you and ask if I could have two or three. But if you still said no, you only get one. Uh, the one lure that I would pick by the title of this video would definitely be the underspin. Reason being is because I've caught a lot of big fish with this lure. I've also caught a lot of fish in general. So maybe just numbers of fish. Super versatile, super weedless. You can fish it slow, you can fish it fast, you can fish at different water column depths, you can vary the size, you can do a lot of things with an underspin, but I will tell you, this Picor Lure right here is probably my number one. I kind of actually almost think it's cheating because uh, there, were, there was a time that I stopped throwing it all together because it just got too easy. But that being said, uh, if you're looking for a great one to throw, it is the underspin, and I'm gonna talk about a couple of things really quickly. We're gonna talk about different variations of sizes, we're talking about different variations of hooks and a couple of little unique things that I add to mine uh, that, I, that I think you'll like, that I think will help you in your setup and ultimately help you have more fun on the water catching fish with underspins. So let's break it down. All right, so let's talk about sizes first, but also the terminal tackle or the hooks that go with them. And I'm going to break this down in a couple of different ways. We're going to talk about uh, three different sizes of the, of the plastic that you're putting on them. And then we'll talk about uh, three different sizes of variations of hooks, okay? And yeah, I'll show you the, the gear that I use, meaning like the rod, the line, the reel. We'll talk about that. Uh, but, but let's first start with a couple of my favorites. And the first one's gonna be the Castaic Jerky J Swim. And this particular color is Green Shad. Now, when I say my favorites, I actually do mean it, even in these colors, okay? So this is a five inch paddle tail swim bait and this is a green shad color, and I'm throwing it with a five aught owner flashy swimmer, and that is a one quarter ounce weight when you combine the whole thing. So it's one fourth ounce, five aught hook, five inch swim bait. That's a good fish. Not the PB we're looking for, but she'll freaking do. <laughs> yes, sir. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. <sighs> Boom. Ah, yes, that's a, uh, that's a good six or seven pounder. That's awesome right there. Right there, Turkey J Swim, green shag color. That's amazing. 6.54, 6.54. There she is again. Yes, yes. I particularly like to throw this one, I wish I could throw it year round, but like in the fall, like right now in the fall transition, bass are keeping in smaller bait and I'm just not getting consistent bites on the bigger one. Now, if you're talking pre-spawn, spawn, and slightly after the post-spawn, this one is money. I mean, money. Once you start getting into the shad spawn though, so kind of like that, that May time frame, kind of through the fall, um, the smaller ones work better. I'll get to those in a second. Um, I also throw the weedless version, so you'll see like if I push down the hook uh, points out, but otherwise this is relatively weedless. Um, I like throwing this version around timber. Uh, yeah, around a lot of grass as well. And, uh, and even, even on rocks, kind of hopping it or swimming it right over rocks, okay? So it's pretty versatile. I will say I'll probably use this one the most if I can. If I can, this is probably gonna be my number one go-to setup right here. Five inch Jerky J Swim, Green Shad, five aught owner flashy swimmer, and again, that is a one fourth ounce. 
But let's say it's this time of year, present day, right now, you'll notice there's no line attached to this because it's not what I have tied on. It's not what I'm using. What I'm using instead is a four inch paddle toe swim bait, but with the same five odd hook. Let me show you that one. That is going to be the one that I'm using. Uh, I have to bring the rod with me because it is tied on, is the Exone Swammer. Now this particular color I really like as well. This is Brim or Bream. Not really sure how it's pronounced, but I'll put it up on the screen for you. Uh, but again, this is the five aught hook, owner flashy swimmer, quarter ounce weight, but a four inch paddle tail. Now you'll notice that even if it's a four inch paddle tail, that five aught hook sits about halfway back in the plastic, but there's still enough plastic in the egg zone swammer that the hook can go through the meat of the plastic and it still holds up. I mean, I can catch at least five or six fish on this one paddle tail swim bait. Sounds like you're going so much faster from out here. The car's up got there? One. You got one? Oh, a good one. Come on this side. Good? Yeah! Right. Heck oh, yeah! Boy. Sweet. On the underspin? Yes, sir. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Um, I told you I'd show you a, a unique little trick here and what I like to add to mine. Um, you'll notice that on the swammer, um, the, the hook is just slightly exposed here at the top, right? Now, yes, you can push it forward and bury that hook tip in uh, the plastic, but after a few catches, that the plastic kind of makes a hole. So what I add instead, uh, I don't know if I can show you this on the camera, hopefully you can see it, um, but right here, there's a bait peg right underneath that plastic, okay? So if you push it right up on the bottom of that plastic, it'll sit right there and hold that plastic up on, um, up on your hook. Now, when the fish bites it, it's gonna slide down, right? So, so it doesn't impede or impose on the hook set, uh, that little bait peg, it is still going to slide down this, the hook just fine. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily worry about that. It also comes in a couple different sizes, so I'll show you that packaging. They're actually from uh, Harmony Fishing Company. They're called Bait Pegs. I'll turn them this way. Uh, this one is a size one, which is really small. You'll see that one right there. Uh, this one's a size two. Uh, you'll see it's a tad bit bigger. I use the size two. Uh, they both come 100 per pack, but Harmony Fishing Company uh, makes some pretty unique kind of things that you can add to your tackle or that kind of makes fishing better. These little bait pegs is one of them. Um, I use them on pretty much all of my underspins uh, that have the weedless hook. So you'll notice even with uh, this little jerky J, if I were to open up the bottom there, you will see that there is a bait peg right there in the bottom holding that jerky J up on to uh, your hook. It just allows you to catch more fish with each paddle tail swim bait, okay? So a little side note there, you should use or check out those. All right, now let's go back to uh, to the swammer here. There are times where they will not eat a four inch either and you have to go down even smaller. Right now is a good time of year where that may be the case. Uh, let me get some of the fuzz off of this one, sorry. Um, but this is the mini swammer. So this is a 3.5 inch instead of the four inch, I'll hold them side by side. And you'll also notice that the hook is smaller as well. This one is still the owner flashy swimmer, but it is a three aught instead of the five aught, and this is a 3 16th ounce instead of a quarter ounce. So if you switch these up, you're gonna notice that this one you can get further casting on because it's a little bit heavier. This one you're not gonna be able to cast as far, but sometimes this one's gonna make a, big, a, a bit of a difference because bass are gonna be keyed in on smaller bait. So three aught, 3 16th versus a five aught quarter ounce, all right? Uh, one thing I will say though about both of these owner flashy swimmers, the hooks are really good. And owner actually even does make a one aught, which I believe is maybe even an eighth of an ounce. Uh, so even smaller uh, than this one here, okay? So those are the three weedless options and the sizes that I use if I'm fishing around timber, uh, you know, grass, or if I'm fishing around rocks, um, I will go with the owner flashy swimmer because it's weedless. But uh, let's talk about if I'm over grass, like hydrilla, 
um, but maybe it's not all the way up to the surface and I want to fish like right over it, what I use instead for that because I use an entirely different underspin setup. So let me show you that one. Now, this one has a, kind of a goofy head design, all right? You'll notice here, but this is the Randy Swim and Runner, I believe is what it's called. I got this in a Monster Bass box probably three or four years ago. Um, it comes actually with two paddle tail swim baits, but I still like that green shad version or color. Uh, this actually, you'll notice, is the same color as this Jerky J, uh, but obviously a lot smaller. This one's five inches, this one's three and a half. So I do like throwing this one right over grass. So say for example, if uh, I'm in six foot of water and three foot down is hydrilla, right? I will fish this right across the top. And as soon as I tick that hydrilla, I'll just jerk it up. And usually the fish come right out of it and eat it. Uh, what I like about it is even if I fish it on rocks, you'll see that the head on this is chipped up because coming across the bottom, that head hits first before the hook, right? So when the head hits, I pull up. And even though this is an exposed hook, it stays out of some of the junk because this head and this bottom hits first. Now, Strike King does make one as well, so let me show you that one right here. And this is actually meant for salt water, um, but they but they do uh, make a, Strike King does make an, an underspin version. I haven't really used this one as much, um, but I do like the eyes on it. I like the head design. Uh, I like the, the willow blade that's on there. Uh, it's a little bit, um, just a tad smaller willow blade. Um, but has still a really good profile or presence. Really big stout hook. So the hook on the Strike King version is bigger than the Swim and Runner. Um, but uh, I honestly just got this one. I haven't really used it a lot yet to be able to give you uh, a big review um, or a thorough one, but I do plan on using the Strike King version. And then also in this month's Monster Bass box came the Mustad version. So I'll hold the two side by side. Uh, the only thing that I think is negative about the Mustad, first of all, look at the hook difference, right? That's a huge hook on this Mustad uh, uh, underspin. The only negative thing is on this Mustad one, if you'll notice between the willow blade and the hook, there's a lot more room, right? The width of your plastic can be bigger versus the width of the plastic on this one. So if you were to put a plastic swim bait you don't, you can't, it can't be very thick or it's going to impede or impose against uh, this spin. Um, so I do wish that this head was maybe a little bit taller. So this blade would drop down a little bit more like it is here. And that's why this design is kind of elongated head is uh, so that the blade can come off of that plastic. So I do feel like this one swims a little tighter. Um, but that being said, I have caught fish so far with the Mustad underspin. Uh, and it works well. This one though that I have is a 3 8 ounce. I do believe it comes in different weights. Uh, this one you can buy in a quarter ounce, 3 8, and I think maybe even a half. I probably really prefer the quarter ounce or the 3 8. Uh, it just helps it to stay down in the water column a little bit more, um, but I, I love this one here. It's probably one of my favorites with that exposed hook. It works extremely well. There's one. Nah. That's a great bass. Sweet. So real quick, going back to these two sizes um, between either the five inch or the four inch, this time of year, I'm just catching more fish on this one. Uh, trust me, I wish I could get away with throwing the five inch. Uh, right now though, the bait is smaller, the bass are keyed in on smaller bait, and so the four inch uh, seems to be working better. Heck, even that three and a half inch would probably even work better uh, than this four inch. Uh, I was just on Lake Fork last weekend though. Nice. That's a good fish. 
fish. Yes, sir. Heck yeah. What'd you catch it on? Underspin. Good one there on the swimmer. On the underspin. Right in the top of the mouth, too. He wasn't coming off. They were eating this a lot, and I know the Bass on Lake Fork still consider this to be a relatively small snack for them. So the four inches is what I was going with. On some other lakes, you may want to scale down to the three and a half inch, uh, and, and that may help you catch more. But either the Swammer by Egg Zone or the Jerky J by Castaic, uh, I use them both interchangeably. Uh, again, five inch, four inch, and then both of these two, uh, I'll hold them side by side. Um, both of these two are three and a half inches, okay? Uh, the Swammer has a little bit of a thicker body than the Jerky J is a little bit thinner. Uh, the Swammer has a little bit of a wider uh, paddle tail and therefore it kicks a little bit more. This one's a little bit tighter. So it kind of just depends on where I'm fishing, what kind of action I'm wanting, and uh, quite honestly, the hook that I'm using, how much plastic I need to thread it through, um, it's kind of all just depends on which one that I pick. But those are pretty much the terminal tackle I use, the tips and tricks that I kind of use also to make sure that I get more out of my plastics. Um, and then let me show you real quickly the gear that I use. All right, so last thing, I'll show you what, um, what my setup is right now, all right? I have the Lose Custom Pro Reel along with the TFO Resolve Bass Rod. Um, however, uh, I do use sometimes uh, the loose hyper mag. So this is another underspin setup I have, but the loose hyper mag. Um, I would just say in general, you want kind of a lighter reel in my opinion, because you're going to be casting a lot and we're in reeling a lot, right? It's a moving bait. You're recovering some water. Uh, you will feel fatigue in your arms and forearms, even your shoulders if you have a heavier reel. So what I like both about the custom pro or the loose hyper mag is they're both around five ounces. I think that Custom Pro is a little bit heavier. The Hyper Mag is like 5.4 ounces, um, but the, this is a TFO Tactical Elite Rod. So whether you like wind grips or cord grips, TFO has a little bit of both. Uh, either way though, you want a medium heavy to heavy rod. Again, it depends on the manufacturer and somewhere in that 7.2 to 7.4 uh, length is kind of what I use. This one's a 7.3 heavy. Um, the other one was a 7.4 heavy. Uh, so either way, that's kind of the range that you want. The gear speed of the reel, um, you can have about 7.5 to 1. You can go up to an 8.3 to 1. Just make sure if you have 8.3 to 1, you're not just burning it because sometimes they want it slow, all right? Um, if you want a full breakdown of how that fishing went on Lake Fork with the underspin, you can go back and watch the previous video breaking down the pattern on Lake Fork. I talk about what we were using, where exactly the fish were, and how they were patterning. So go back and watch that one. Let me know if you like this one though. The underspins will catch you a ton of fish. You just gotta know how to use them. Uh, oh, last thing, I do fish them on 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. 17 pounds if it is uh, an exposed hook, all right? And then 20 pounds uh, fluorocarbon if it is weedless. Uh, because these are thick gauge hooks. Uh, you need a heavier rod and thicker line to help you set the hook. But underspins are fantastic. You will catch a ton of fish on them. You just need to kind of understand when to use which one, whether it be an exposed hook or a weedless hook, which plastics to put on which hook sizes really makes a big difference. Switch them up throughout the year. Uh, I love throwing the five inch, but right now they're eating probably the three and a half or the four inch more. When it gets back around to pre-spawn, I'll go back to using the five inch again. So vary up your sizes, vary up your hooks with those sizes, and you'll catch a lot of fish on the underspin. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video or uh, what you think about using underspins in general. And if nobody sold you today, God loves you. And so do I. Peace out.